everyone, this is Laura from Watch Laura So, and today we are going to be doing Feathers on a Curve. I am so excited about this, but also a little bit nervous because, you know, when I started doing feathers, the idea of doing feathers on a curve was so intimidating to me. Every time I tried doing it, it came out looking just not so great. And I couldn't understand why. And it just took lots and lots and lots of quilts to finally come up with a way of making them look pretty nice. But even so, I've learned to kind of embrace the mistakes that I make along the way. So I think that feathers, they are so beautiful. And sometimes we worry that every single thing has to be perfect. But it doesn't. It, it's the overall look of the feather that's going to be beautiful. There are times when you're doing a feather on a curve that you'll get stuck. So I actually show you in this video a time when I got stuck. And what I did to get out of it and what I would have done differently. So while I'd like to show you everything perfect, I think it's also important to show you that uh, mistakes can happen, but how do you embrace them? And what do you do with them? Do you always have to rip them out or do you kind of try to embrace it and work it into your design? We'll get started with Feathers on a Curve and I'll see you at the sewing machine. I have my uh, <laughs> stitch length to zero now. I've dropped my feed dogs. I have my quilting foot on. I use an open toe, that's because I just happen to prefer it. I have my curved line on my blue fabric. I'm going to get started with my first plume. And then what I'm going to do, and I am doing the bump method. So I'll just get going on here. But my basic idea is when I'm going around a curve, I'm going to follow this curve up until about here. And at this point, and depending where I am on the bump, I am actually going to take either a smaller or sometimes I take a much bigger uh, plume. In this case, I'm probably going to take a smaller one and then the next one's going to fold over it. So you'll see how it goes. Let's drop the presser foot and I'm going to get going. So we're going to get going. Let's go do our first one. Okay. And now I'm going to follow this line. And we're going to come out here. And now I'm going to backtrack. And then I'm going to come out here. And at this point, I kind of want my plumes becoming a little bit bigger. I'm not going to come all the way down. I'm going to have plenty that comes down into the spine. So I don't want to add to the spine any, you know, any more than I have to. I think I'm going to take one more big one and then I might do a small one. So let's see if I get stuck. Sometimes you can get stuck by doing stuff like this. So I'm going to go ahead and back track. And I'm going to do a short one now. So I'm going to come in and bring it down alongside this stem. Now I'm going to come back up. And now the next one I'm going to kind of flop over and by bringing this around, it looks like it's all part of the plume. And then I can go on from there. And then once I'm out here, once I'm out on the outer edge, then it becomes, then this becomes the tougher area. So we're going to go back down here. You could bring it over a little bit further, certainly. Uh, you could, a person could bring it out a lot further, but I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm actually going to go back down here, uh, down in this area and start up here. 
so that I bring everything together. So I try to work in the same area at the same time. All right, so we are going to have a little bit of a spine happening here. So I'm going to come back down. I'm going to do my starter. You don't have to do this. It just helps me. And I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to backtrack. Pretty much to there. And I'm going to bring it around. And then I'm going to go ahead out here. Get it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to bring it around. Backtrack. And I'm going to bring it um, probably around to here. Now where this one was small, this one's still going to be large because I'm on the outer edge. So I can make this large, just like that. Because I don't need to fold anything. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna go out here. And then we're gonna backtrack. back to this side and I want to get it a little bit bigger to match the other side. going to go on this side and I'm going to get a little bit shorter <laughs> back track and bring it in like this as you see what's happening is I could get stuck on this side so I'm going to go ahead on the outside here now we've moved on to the outside on this side. And we're gonna go ahead. I would have liked that a little bit more rounded. Gonna see if I can okay, smooth it out there. And I'm gonna come back around. All right, I am going to take a short one here, but I have a potential for having a problem over there, a big pot potential, and it's how I came in. So let's see with what we can do, because this happens. Sometimes we concentrate on one side and the other starts, side starts. So we're going to come out here a little skinny there, bring it around. All right, I'm actually going to bring it down a little bit further and then come back around. Okay, so here it looks like I'm totally stuck, and I am actually, but. I'm going to not be stuck. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do a small one. So let's come down here. And we're going to be on the outside here. So it's kind of nice. We can just go. A lot less worries on the outside, I think. The outside worries are how you approach the inside coming up. All 
All right. But we still have quite a bit to go on the outside. longer to get going and I'm actually going to take a small one right here which is what I should have done on my other when we started out down here we came around the, all the curves okay everything was in control when we got up here I probably should have taken one before this one right here should have been a little bit shorter. Bring this around. Like I have to tell you, when you are quilting white on blue, you're going to see every little mistake. But typically I have a coordinating color that goes with the fabric. And so you don't see every little place where, you know, your stitches miss for three it missed right there. So right here, it missed a little bit. You don't see that. But the overall design is what you do see. Here's another feather on a curve that I did. This one is a little bit different. I did, uh, I approached the curve on this side first. And then I worked to the next side. So that's another curve. So the two curves next to each other. Oh, the two curves. I don't know. You know, different approaches. So I tried to take a different approach on this one. So I did one, two, and then small. One, two, and then going to my outer. And then one, two, small. One, two, small. So a lot of times that's what I'll do. I'll do one, two, small as I go into the curve. So this one right here is on the top of the curve. Now I'm going into this part, the inner part of the curve. And so it's one, two, small. And then um, same thing up here, one, two, small. And that's what I tried to do on this particular one, on this particular one to show you that uh, change so this is one two small and then I'm on the outer part I go one two small and then I'm going on to the outer part and that seems to work really well for me this one was a little bit bigger of a curve and so it was more like one two three small so this the blue one is a bigger curve the uh, maroon one here is a smaller curve both of them would look very nice on a quilt this the blue one is a bigger uh, feather in general than the smaller one over here but they both work beautifully well so I wanted to show you the different kinds and you will develop your own style. On this one, I would use this uh, on a lot of quilts. This one is a little bit big, but there are times that I would have put that down. That was a lot of fun making feathers on a curve and it can be a little stressful too. <laughs> so, I really enjoy this design. It's probably one of my very favorite designs, especially to use on a wide border on a quilt. I love doing feathers on a curve on a wide border quilt, a quilt with a wide border. <laughs> so that works out great to do that. 
I also use feathers on a curve, sometimes in the center part of the quilt. Sometimes I make it really small and do the same thing just on a very small level and it turns out great also. And I think I'm gonna share that next time. I think I'll do one more on the feathers and I'll show you feathers small and maybe around a couple shapes because that happens too, like around a heart or a circle. Thank you for so much for joining me today. It is starting to get late. I don't know about you, but where I am, it's starting to get dark earlier and earlier. And so I am seeing that in my room right now and I'm sorry about the lighting. But thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time at the sewing machine. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye.